getting tired? You want me to drive? No, thanks. I want to get there. <laughs> you know you can't keep your mind on the wheel. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Miriam, let's pick him up. What did I tell you? He looks cute. Anything in pants looks cute to you. Anyway, I'm not taking any chances. You'll go to the windshield doing that. Want a lift? Well, I don't want to crowd you. Throw your bag on the rumble and tumble in. Thanks. <laughs> Why don't you relax? He looks okay. You and your intuition, he'll probably hold us up, toss us out, and take the car. He didn't. Come on, let's get going. You going far? Nope, just up the road a ways. I've got a job waiting. Going to the construction job? That's where we're heading. Construction job? No, I'm going to the vineyards. I'm a grape picker. Oh, I thought maybe you're on your way to that new cracking plant they've just built. It's quite a project. They're going to make that 100 octane gas for airplanes. You can let me off just before you get there. What's that, a trailer? It's a lunch wagon. It's the great Marion Blair Enterprise. Hot meals for hungry bachelors. You see, the married men have wives who put up their lunch on this job. And the single men, poor fellows. Thousands and thousands of single men. They eat us. Sounds like a good deal. You're not joking. Two girls entirely surrounded by bachelors. Woo-hoo! Hey, speaking of lunch, would you like a bite? Sure, where can we stop for one? What do you think we're hauling this lunch wagon for? Fully equipped from prunes to paprika. What do you say, Marion? Let's pull up and put on the feed bag. Oh, we ought to keep going. Tell you what, let, uh, uh, what's your name? Tim. Let Tim drive while we fix lunch. That way we won't be losing any time and you can rest. You need it. You're as crabby as a seafood salad. Well, maybe that would be a good idea. You're not going to put anything more on that sandwich, are you? Why not? It looks like a dagwood special now. I wonder if he likes mayonnaise or mustard or, uh, or pick a lily. Think he's a pick a lily type? Why aren't you asking? Hey, T, you like mayonnaise or pick a lily? What? Do you like mayonnaise or pick a lily on your sandwich? This may be very funny to you, young lady, but do you realize you nearly killed me? Well, what do you think we were doing, having fun? Besides that, you crumpled a perfectly good fender, and you're going to pay for it. You could have gone around us. There wasn't room, and there wasn't time, and you know it. Besides, you were driving on the wrong side of the road. Sure I was. They were in danger, and I was trying to help them. And whose fault was that? You hadn't been driving like a crazy maniac and watch where you were going. I was looking back because you were yelling at me. There you see. Even she admits it was your fault. Reckless driving, that's what it was. Who belongs to that? It's ours. You got a license for it? No. Hauling a trailer without a license. Why, you're the kind of people to make the roads unsafe for law-abiding citizens. Now, wait a minute, Bob. If you hadn't been going around that curve at about twice the speed limit, you could have turned off in time. Is that so? Yeah, and you stand around here accusing us. Another crack out of you and I'll call in the law. Is that so? Yeah. Well, don't call too loud, Bob. I happen to be the law. 
I didn't ask you to pick me up. I was just standing there. Oh, yeah? You almost threw your thumb out of joint. Well, I certainly didn't ask you for any lunch. Well, if you hadn't been so smart with the sheriff, we wouldn't be in here. Try and talk yourself out of that one. Go on. Oh, for the love of Hannah. <laughs> Shut up, will you? Honest to goodness, fella. My head feels like it was a time bomb ticking. I've been listening to you and those girls hollering for the past half hour. Pipe down, will you? Did you ever try to make a couple of dames pipe down when they think they've got a beat? Men. They're all cowards. Try arguing with them and they hide behind one another's hands. Yeah, well, what we gotta figure is how to get out of here. Fifty dollars. It would have only been twenty-five if you hadn't cracked wise with the judge. Well, I wasn't gonna stand there and let him tell us we were a road hazard when it was that great picker's fault. Take it easy, will ya? Oh, it ain't our fault you've been drinking like a storm drain. Hey, look, visitors. I reckon he's sobered up by now. Sure gave us plenty of trouble last night. All right, Spike, you can come out now. Gee, this is swell. Bailing me out, huh? Some week you're gonna draw your full pay. Oh, now, wait a minute. It wasn't my fault. I was standing at the bar, see? Minding my own business. When this palooka steps up to me and he says, Boilermakers is putrid. Now, how did I know he was talking about a drink and not me? Tim Scott! You McGee son of a steam fitter. Rod, it's great to see you. I knew I'd run into you someplace. How are you anyway? Fine, fine. Say, you weren't on your way up the line to the construction job. I could sure use you in the crew. Uh, I was on my way to another job and ran into a little grief. There ain't any other job for you when I need men. Forget it, Rod. I got a new trade now. Oh, uh, you mean on account of what happened on an eastern job? I'm not going to send you up high. You can be a chipper right on the ground. No, thanks, Rod. I can't take the job. Say, what's Scott's fine? I'll pay it. Fifty dollars and the cost of a new fender. If you want to pay the girls fine, that's fifty dollars too. Girls? What girls? They're in on this rap with me. A little auto accident. They're holding me responsible. Well, all right. I'll pay theirs too if it'll get him out of here. Don't strain yourself, mister. We're not asking for charity. Well, what's the matter with you, Lushwell? Gee. You sound just like my ex-wife. I bet you tell that to all the girls. Yeah. And you look like her too. Ah! Not even jail can do that to me. All right, here's your hundred and an extra twenty for the fender. Is that okay? Sure, sure. Shouldn't come to more than that. Wait a minute. If you're going to lay out money for us, I want to know where to send it. You can hand it to him. He's the boss rigger on the job you were heading for. We're heading for his right. Our wagon's busted inside and out. We're down to our last quarter. Are you the two girls who are coming up with the lunch wagon? Yeah, that's right. Oh, and forget about it. We were waiting for you. I'll send a crew down to fix the wagon, and you can draw dough for supplies. Well... Oh, only if you'll take my note for it. Sure, I'll take a note. Now, wait a minute. The girls think I was at fault. You'd better take my note. Listen, you couldn't pick that many grapes. What's this about picking grapes? Don't tell me that's the job you've been yapping about. Yeah, I'm a grape picker now. Sure, he can't do a real man's work. All right, I'll take the job. But only until I pay for everything. The fender, the fines, and the wagon. Does that suit you? That's a deal, Jim. But remember, I'm not staying. As soon as I pay off, I'm leaving. Is that clear? Don't bother. We'll take the loss. Come on. Don't start any more arguments. I can't get over it. Same height, same shape, and everything. Listen, Brow. You can't help being ugly. But you could stay indoors. Just like my ex-wife. Just like her. <laughs> I got this cafe in the place you want. Move it a couple of more times and you'll think I'm an elephant. <laughs> well, never mind, Spike. When the new whistle blows, we'll have an extra special lunch for you. Oh, boy. If there's one thing I like to eat more than anything else, it's food. <laughs> Just a minute. Aww. Got another job for you. Yeah? Here, nail these up. Oh. <laughs> Our eggs are fresher than a wolf's whistle. Our spinach has no sand. P.S. We don't serve spinach. <laughs> Always gagging, just like my ex-wife. <laughs> Must have been you who made her gag. Uh. Here comes your hitchhiking friend. I still say they're good-looking characters. Which one? Both of them. Hi. Everything all right? Yeah, thank you. Want to be our first customer? I got to get Tim started. 
certainly deserve him. I'd have to be awfully hungry. You'll like Jeff Hines. He's a welder boss of the crew, a great old rust eater. Hi, Charlie. How's it going? Terrific layout, Rod. Yeah. Well, will you see what we got to do to meet the deadline? Oh, Jeff. Yeah. Shake hands with Tim Scott, your new chipper. All right, glad to know you, Tim. You this is just Pete Glendy and Holly Birchwell. Right. Hiya, Pete. Bill Madden, our grinder. This is, uh... Yeah, Tim. I know this, Lug. What does he want here? He's joining your crew. And I'm through. Nobody's making me work with you, either. Now, wait a minute, you two guys. If I had any other place to put you, then why don't you let bygones be bygones? Because my brother wouldn't like it. Because... Another accident might happen to You man. always were a loud mouth. Well, man. Hold it! I don't know what you two guys got against each other. Why, that good... We got a job to do here. This plant's gonna make 100 octane gas for those planes flying over Japan. My kid's flying one of them. The more gas we make, the sooner we'll get home. That's more important than any grudge you two got against each other. I guess you're right, Jeff. Come on, pal. No, if I didn't need men so badly, I'd fire that Madden. What's he sore about? Oh, his brother Sam was with Tim when Tim was a high man back east. They took a bad spill and Sam was killed. Pete's always blamed Tim for it. You see. Tim had nothing to do with it. As a matter of fact, Sam grabbed him when he fell. You say Tim was a high man? Yeah. Well, what did he take a chipper's job for? That's not in his class. Well, he hasn't been the same since he took that fall. He's scared to go high. Hmm. Too bad. What he needs to do is to go up again. That's the only thing will cure him. Well, you can't force him. Keep him busy with you, Jeff, and don't let him tangle with Bill. Don't worry. I can still bust up a fight. But I have to bust a couple of heads to do it. A couple of gals running. One of them sure reminds me of my ex-wife. <laughs> Looks like her, talks like her. I wonder. Yep. I'll bet she can... And what? Cook like her. <laughs> Come on. Come on with me. You'll be eating like a goose. Leave your lunchbox here. Come on. Yeah, but I got lemon pie in there. Yeah. Pull up in the corral. All right, all right, just a minute. I've only got two cans. Coming up. Nothing like home cooking, I always say. Even if it ain't cooked at home. Jigs and Maggie, knock the hips off Jigs. Curry, oh, Jack, right, just a minute. One ticket to the great unknown. Everything? Hamburger, no onions. Scrambled sirloin, whole bread. No bread. No potatoes? Here. Well, Mr. Chavez, no pots, please. This keeps up our food won't hold out. Neither will we. Hey, Torch. Yes? Are you married? No, are you? Yeah. Ain't that tough? Yeah, on your wife. Mustard, please. Brody, right, you like right barbecue there. sauce coming up. Okay, give me another hamburger and double it. My ex-wife used to cook up a mess of black-eyed peas, sweet potatoes, no, oh, brother. Jello and wood cream. Shiver and Liz in the snow. In the snow. Long time, but it's going to be worth it. I think the girls said they were going to have pork chops with applesauce and angel food cake. Wow. <laughs> Twenty-one floor. <laughs> Wow! Well, how did I know? I didn't know there was going to be such a crowd.
Why don't you get some sleep, Rod? Well, I gotta work out a couple of problems first. That cat cracker's a pretty difficult assignment, isn't it? Well, you heard what the boss said this afternoon. The plant's gotta be making gasoline in two months. Seems to me he's riding you pretty hard. Sure. And Washington's riding him harder. But it's a big job, Tim. It's important. It's gotta be done. What's your main difficulty? Men. If I could get some good, experienced high men. Rod. Yeah? No, nothing. Not now, Marion. I'm waiting for somebody. Might give me a cup of coffee. Okay. You still munching? Well, you made me promise I wouldn't take a drink. Well, I suppose you've got to fill it with something. Boy, what a cavity. Nothing else to do around here. I'm beginning to understand why your ex-wife is your ex-wife. Up till now, I haven't found any ham in this sandwich. Take another bite. No. Nope. Not that. You must have just gone past it. Huh? Oh, um, Cassie. <laughs> There's something I want out. I don't know where you're going to put it. No, it's it's not that. You see, uh... Would you go to the Boilermaker's Ball with me? Me? Go to the Boilermaker's Ball with you? Uh-huh. After all those invites I've turned down? Don't answer that question. When is it? As if I didn't know. Saturday night. Oh, gee, this is wonderful. <laughs> I'll pick you up. Oh, gee. <laughs> Hey, that reminds me, you're going to the Boilermaker's Ball with me. Well, thanks for letting me in on it. Well, it's good politics. All your customers will be there. Is it good politics to be seen with the boss? Anybody says it isn't, I'll take care of them. Well, what'll I wear? A suit of armor? Oh, I'll just bring a lead pipe and a rubber hose. <laughs> Informal. <laughs> well, here comes Eight Ball Joe. Hi, Tim. Sorry I kept you waiting. We just finished working on that sphere. Finished? Good. Yeah, they're going to fill it with pentane and test it in a few minutes. Jeff's doing a good job on that sphere. Have a cup of blackjack. Welcome to Tomaine Manor. How'll you have it? Without cream or without sugar? Without wisecracks. Jeff said you wanted to see me about something important. Yeah, there's a job open on the main tower. Hi, man. Yeah. You know better than that, Rod. Oh, wait a minute. Take it easy. Have your coffee. Say. Don't you gals ever get out from behind that counter? This is going to lead to something. Well, I was going to suggest you might want to climb up to the top of the main tower. Or maybe the bubble tower. Bubble? Yeah, those tall towers over there. You mean they build those tall things just to blow bubbles? Well, not exactly, but there's a terrific view from up there. On a clear day, you can see all of San Francisco Bay. And today's a clear day. Oh, gee, I'd love it. Uh, you mean I can climb up there? Sure, I got a half hour to spare. I'll take you. How about you, Cassie? Not me. I'm a firm believer in terra firma. And the firmer it is, the less terror I get. What do you say, Tim? No, thanks. I'm not interested. Ah, don't be like that. It'll be safer for Marion. We'll put her in between us. Rod. Hey, what's the matter with you? Are you scared to go up there? Gee, for a guy who talked up so brave to the sheriff at the wrong time. Never mind. I'll go. Well, now you're talking. Let's go. Time's a waste. Well, then. lead on to the bubble tower. And bring me a bubble. <laughs> oh, forget this, Rod. Don't 
yourself. There's a lot of wolves around. It's quite a climb, but it's worth it when you get there. This is one slimming treatment I've never had. Safe and sound. Let me alone. Oh, now, Tim, listen. Just leave me alone. That's the thanks you get from a guy like that. I guess I asked for it. Oh, yeah, sure you did. What did you do besides save his life? I nearly killed him. Killed him? Maybe there's a screw loose up here, but I don't get it. I made him go up. I planned the whole thing so you'd shame him into it. Look, give it to me slowly, will you? All I know is that since I met you, you've been acting like his nursemaid. Oh, it goes way back, Marion. I broke him into the game. So? You should have known him then. He was a top rigger himself. Full of fight and going places. He'd have been a construction engineer in no time. That fellow? Yep. What happened to him? He took a fall about six stories with another high man. The other fellow was killed. Tim was hurt badly, but he lived, mainly because he fell on the other guy. Oh. After that, he developed a hypsophobia. You know, scared of height. Then he dropped out of sight. Well, you know the rest. Gee, I feel like a heel riding in the way I did. Yeah, I figured if I could shame you into going up again, but you saw what happened. You better go after me. You look pretty sick. 
Yeah, I'll see you later. Watch those gratings, Joe. Say, Jeff, have you seen Tim? Yeah, I passed him near the spheres. They're running the pentane into them. What's the matter? You look worried. Anything wrong? Well, I just had a message to call our neighbors. My wife's taken sick, they said. Oh, it's tough. Let me know what you find out. Yes, Mr. Thomas. Uh, how's my wife? She got a telegram from the War Department. You better read it to me, Mr. Thomas. My son missing in action. Thanks, Mr. Thomas. I'll get in my car, come right home. Tim! Wait a minute, will you? I'm through. Oh, now let me explain. There's nothing to explain. You just used me for a chump to set yourself up with that dame. Now you're talking like a sap. Am I? I told you I didn't want any part of this job in the first place. Now that you've shown her what a brave guy you are and what a chicken-hearted stooge I am, I'm getting out. Go ahead, be pig-headed. Run away like this and you'll prove you got a yellow streak. Tim, you crazy fool, you... The spear's blown. It's full of pentane. Keep everybody away, I'll get the squad. That spheroid blows up, it'll set us back a month. Is it dangerous? Dangerous? Cigarettes, spark of an engine, anything might set it off. Hey, that gas is murder. Get the phone line through, Danny. Joe, phone the fire chief. The rest of you guys get down the road and stop all the time. Boy, boy, boy. I gotta get plenty of hot coffee quick. The fire's out. What's the rush? It's for one of the fellows that was hurt in the explosion. Tim, you know. Was he hurt badly? No, shot mostly, the doc says. But the other fellow, Jeff, Tim saved his life. They're in the first aid now. Give me the coffee, will you? You go on back to the job, Spike. I'll take the coffee over. All right, thanks. See you after, Cass. Why the sudden switch? You want to be a Florence Bloomingdale or something? They gave him something to put him to sleep. I know how rocky you feel, Scott. Rod told me about you saving Jeff. But this plant's a government project. We're trying to meet a heavy schedule. That spear blow up sets us back a month. What are you getting at? Spears don't blow like that. Not unless somebody was careless. You ran a test on it, didn't you? Sure we ran a test. We're fighting time, man. We didn't get a chance to x-ray very well. With experienced men on the job, that isn't necessary. Yeah, I understand that. I'm going to be frank with you, Scott. That spear blew because of a weakness. Maybe a chip too close. To oh, Tim's a careful worker. He wouldn't do that. How do we know? You told me yourself he was a high man, not a chipper. Well, what's he doing on a job like this? Well, I... That's personal reasons we'd rather not go into. All right. But you may have to eventually. The government inspectors will be investigating. Investigating what? What do they think I did? they got to find out what made that spear blow. You better be around to answer questions. The doctor wanted this for someone. Thanks. I like the way they believe in a guy around here. Hello. Well, come on, I won't bite you. How are you feeling now? Okay. My car's in the parking lot. Want a lift? Tim, I'm a dope. What can I say to that? No, really. The way I talked to you before we climbed the bubble tower was rotten. What? I'm the same guy as I was then. Just a little more roughed up, that's all. Outside of that, I'm the same guy. Yeah, but I'm different. I know something now I didn't know then. 
Rod told you? Yeah. Why can't he keep his big mouth shut? Because he wanted to set me straight. He knew what was the matter with me. Why did he have to insist on my going up? Just to make me look cheap with you? Oh, that's where you're wrong. He thought if he could get you to climb again, you'd get over your phobia. I wish I could believe that. I stop here every night for a few minutes. Lovely view, isn't it? Why does everyone keep on worrying about me? I didn't want to come here in the first place. Tim, Rod's right. You're too valuable for picking grapes. Uh. Look at that tremendous project. They tell me they make enough gas every day for 5,000 bomber missions. Pretty important, isn't it? You making incentive speeches, too? <laughs> if anyone needs them. All right, Miss America, you get the gold medal. I'm not checking out. If you want to know, I don't think you're to blame for that sphere blowing up. You? What do you know about that? Radar. Marion, <laughs> you're terrific. You think so? Then why are you taking me for dinner? Huh? You're also a pretty fast worker. One of us has to be fast. Meaning I'm a little slow on the uptake? Well... Mm. And when they brought the roast beef a la Ketzeldorfer and it turned out to be hash, we both laughed so hard, Marion got the hiccups. And where'd you go? Out to the hula hut on Bay Drive. The band there is hotter than a rivet. Seems to me for a sick man you did a lot of stepping. Uh, there was nothing wrong with me that a cozy evening with a bouncy babe wouldn't cure. And then after that, you uh, propped her at the doorstep, of course. No, I went up to her apartment. You're dead? Yeah, Cassie was there. Oh. <clears throat> nice girl, Cassie. You know, I don't see how I could have been so wrong about Marion. I guess we just got up on the wrong foot. But now you're right in the groove. Yeah. She's even going to break a date with some dope just to go to the Boilermaker's Ball with me Saturday night. She's going with you? Yeah. And when you get in there, don't use my toothbrush, too. Cassie, I want to get a little bite before the stampede. <clears throat> my face clean enough to eat? Yeah, but who'd want to eat it? What do you want? Boston cream pie. Gee, I don't think that's a nice way to talk. Oh, don't bother cutting it. I'll take it just as it is. You want a fork, or shall I give you a shovel? A oh, fork will be all right. We pay for those dishes ourselves, remember? Yeah, I'm sorry. What's the matter with you? You're as nervous as a jumping beam with a palsy. Well, I... I made a date for the ball tonight. Well, what's wrong with that? So did I. Yeah, but I made it with two men. Oh, fine. Who are the two lucky fellows? Rod and Tim. Well, it gets better and better. Which one are you going to break the date with? Rod. <laughs> Shall we start walking back to Los Angeles now, or wait till after lunch? I never did anything like this before in my life. Get me out of it, Cassie. Oh, no. It's like wearing a girdle. You have to get out of it by yourself. Oh, Rod. Oh, gee, I'm glad you dropped by. I... I gotta break that date tonight. You're not telling me anything. Tim said you were gonna break a date with some dope to go with him. Oh, but I didn't tell him it was you. Well, thanks very much. Then hey, what's the idea, anyway? Well, well, you said yourself he needed help, and... He was feeling so low, and... Oh, when he asked me, I just couldn't turn him down. Worried about his morale, huh? Yeah, that's morale. Well, what about my morale? Oh, I feel off. But there's, there'll be other days and places to go. Got a promise? Sure. Well, save me some dances tonight, anyway. Every other one. Well, okay, then. As long as you're sure it's nothing serious between you and Tim. Oh, no. Nothing serious, honest. Don't you take time out to breathe? Not when I'm eating. How'd you happen to open a lunch wagon? On account of my win. Your win? Yeah, I was losing it. Being chased around counters by cafe owners. I do with all these people around. You look so beautiful, I couldn't help it. Oh, that's just because I'm not surrounded with hamburgers and pig's knuckles. And I wash behind the ears, too, see? For a boilermaker's ball, that's overdoing it. Hey, 
Sure, for the first time in history, there ain't gonna be any brawl. What are you trying to be, Ruff? I'm sorry, Sheriff, but you won't have any use for this. Oh, no? Well, what's all that? That's a scrap for the scrap drive. For the scrap drive? For the scrap drive. Boy, that's a lot of mama with Bill Madden. He's got the larger economy size. The floor's too slippery. What ain't the floor? It's just that my shoes have been shined. Well, I used to dance with my wife all the time. Well, that explains everything. She didn't divorce you. She's oh. just hiding. Oh, Cassie, don't be like that. You know, I must be on my ear about you. Why? I never felt much like dancing before. Oh, I feel like I'm floating. Even to that music. It's getting kind of warm in here, isn't it? Did you notice that too? Would you mind getting me a drink? That bar looks like a menagerie. And I'll be back in a jiff with a beer. Now you wait right over here. How about my beer? Hi, Fatso. Hi, Tim. Give me a couple of beers, Jack. Take your time. There's plenty ahead of you. About time, you were going to save me every other dance. I, I just couldn't quit on him. The dances were so close together. Well, okay, but I'm going to wait right here for the next one. It's about time. I got a feeling this is going to be a big evening. Little room, little room. Who are you shoving for, little Mickey? Well, it ain't Cal Williams. How are you feeling? Still taking your vitamins, pipe fitter? Ah, Roy, you boy to make us think you're the strongest guys in the world. And I suppose you think you're a regular Amazon, huh? Could be. Yeah? How about uh, putting up or shutting up on a little contest of strength? For instance. Yeah. See that little fella down there? Oh, oh, Give me that little cue ball. What about it? That's your 50 bucks. You can't lift them. This guy's nuts. You ain't kidding. I don't. The heat going to your head? These pipe fitters are all muscles, no brains. I suppose you're no muscle and no brain. Yeah. No. Leave me alone, will you, Cassie? Look, the boys are all in on it. We're going to make suckers out of these guys. Gentlemen, I assure you, he's only had one drink, and that was buttermilk. Cassie, please. Well, how about it? I got 200 bucks here that says none of you pipe fitters can lift the little guy. It's a crime, but I'll take 50 of it. Fair enough. I'll take 20 of it. I get a guy, and what happens? The first time he takes me out on a date, he goes completely, but certainly entirely not. The little lady will hold the best. All we got to do is lift them? Yeah. Come on. One side, boys, one side. How you feel, Pudgy? Meet the fellas. All right. One of the pipe fitters thinks he can lift him. Care if he tries? You don't mind if he puts his finger on your neck while you're trying to lift him, do you? I don't care if he hugs me. <laughs> <laughs> What's he trying to do, tickle me? I'm laughing already. Uh, go ahead, William. <laughs> Pull me close. What's the matter, Cal? Can't you lift them? <coughs> you lift them. Oh, I right. can't. Let me try it. Okay, you try. 20 more. 20 the best. What's with this finger business, anyways? Glance. Glance. His or mine? Yours. And if you pipe fitters had an ounce of brains, you'd know what I'm talking about. You're looking for your babe? Yeah. Better drink your beer. You don't mind if I wait, do you? It's been a pretty long dance. Don't you think we better get back to Tim? If I let you go back to him. How do I know you'll get back to me? You were swell to let me break the date. 
Don't you think Tim seems like a new man? Yeah, I think I like the other one better. Not so much competition. Oh, Rob. Well, I knew you were sorry for him, but I didn't think you were going to fall for him. Well, he's been having so much trouble, and I thought he needed cheering up. That's why I came with him in the first place. There's something the matter, bud? Oh, no. Everything's fine. Fine. What do you think you are, a kangaroo? Quit cramping. Come on, let's get another drink. If you take one more drink, I'm going to leave you flat. Go ahead. I'm tired of hauling you around anyway. Ah, uh, shut up. I can lift him with one hand. Oh, <laughs> my oh, good. Come on, Sam. Check him out. Come on, now. What a bunch of sissies. What a bunch of suckers, you mean. <laughs> oh, Mike, this is wonderful. Maybe I underestimated your brain. Sure. You know what you're going to get out of this, honey? A fur coat. <laughs> hey, watch out for our dough. Hey, wait a minute. It ain't all your dough. I got 50 bucks in this, and that's enough for a fur coat, ain't it, honey? Let me help you. Come on, me. Bet 20 more. Oh, hey, hey. 20 more. Can be your gal, palsy. Give me a bourbon, straight. Give my pal a drink, too. What's the matter? Can I be nice to you, palsy? Everybody else is. I thought you are trying to make a dirty crack and don't know how. Yeah, you always want one of those smart guys. Smart enough not to listen to you. Well, maybe you ought to listen to me and wise up. Oh, boy, I need some more help. Okay. Okay. Off to a pal. The gal's making a chump out of you. I had to tell Rod the only reason she came with you was because she was sorry for you. Shut up. Go ahead and ask her. Here they come. Ask her. She said she was sorry for you. Everybody's sorry for you, you poor sap. Bet you thought she came with you because she liked you, huh? Shut your big trap, will you? No, I won't shut up. The guy that got away with killing my brother. I'd just like you to know what people think about you, you poor unfortunate chump. Oh, oh, oh. The rotten chisels. Hey, look at this. Brackets. And he went into them screws on the floor. You chiseling crook, give me back my dog. <laughs> hey, let me get it. Oh, hey, oh, I never did like that. Guy. Watermakers! Watermaker, pipe fitter. Pipe fitter. Stop and they'll murder each other. Yeah, I'll stop it. Who started it? Well, Chipper. Tim Scott. And Bill Mattern. Something about Tim's girl. Tim started it? Yeah, I better get in there. I won't have a man left to work. Come on, you stay out of it. You stay out here and I'll see what I can do. One of those boiler makers. He's got a wooden leg and I gotta find it. A wooden leg? So what? So what? My teeth are in it. The boiler maker's poor. What a party. Yes. It's got a kick like a mule. This bottle ain't no soft drink either. Wait, I got an idea. You stand right here and hit him on the head as I pass him by.
How's your head, Sheriff? No good. Your friends sure play rough. They sure do, you poor man. Hello, Cassie. Rod sends you? Yeah. Well, open up, Sheriff. We're bailed out, ain't we? Nope. Rod's sick of the routine. You mean he's gonna leave us here? He's too busy to be fooling around with you guys this morning. He said you can bail yourselves out. Sent you some clothes, Tim. We ain't got any dough. Look, this means five days. Rod mm -hmm. needs us. He's got a big lifting job today. Well, if he needs you, he can get you out. Well, I've got to go to work. See you in five days, brain. Cassie. As soon as I get out of here, I'm through for good. I see what you mean. Women. Five days. Five days. Five days in a pig's eye. We're getting out of here. We're going down and collect our dough from the job, and then I'm scrambling with you. Getting out of here? Yeah, that's just what we're doing. Do you always carry that tool belt with you? Oh, you never can tell when you're going to need it. Last night, I needed it to rig Pudgy. Everything checked and tested? Yeah. Good. That's our last heavy operation. I'll be glad when that cap's in place. Already, Rod. Okay, clear away underneath and give Blotz the go signal. Yeah. All set, Blotz. You can start lifting. Okay. doing here? Thought you were going to take a week off. No, oh, I knew you were short-handed. I'll say I'm short-handed. Half the crew's in jail. What a party they gave themselves. There's one guy can stay in jail. Because if he comes out, he's going back again. Who's that? Bill Madden. The government inspector had me look at a section of the sphere that blew. And you know what that no-good booze lapper did? What? He put his grinder on my weld till the shell was thin as paper. No wonder it blew. You sure it was a grinder, not a chipper? Sure as I'm standing here. Good. That clears Tim. I'll drop down to jail tonight and tell him. Forty ton, that cat weighs. Be about the biggest lifting job they'll have. Gosh, kind of makes me wish I was up there. What's the matter? You got cold feet? No. Made up my mind I'm going with you. Well, you better hurry or they'll have sheriffs all. What are you two doing here? Waiting for our closing checks. Yeah, I'll um, I'll go see what's holding them up. Well, I got you to go to work here, Tim. I thought it was going to do you some good, but no, you got to get into beefs and. Why don't you and... stop your preaching and let me alone? I'm being stubborn about it. Look, you've got Marion now. Why don't you just leave it go at that? Why, you stupid lung Yeah, why don't you? One of the cables holding the boom has snapped. The lifting gear is stuck. Somebody's got to cut it loose. Did you hear what he said? Yeah. One of the cables is gone. The others might go any minute. The boom breaks loose. That cap will hit the ground like an earthquake. We won't be able to get another one finished for six weeks. This would happen when my high men are in the jug. Well, there's only one thing to do. What's that? Go up there and cut that cable loose. Then we can let the cap down easy, put new cables on the boom, and finish the job. Give me a tool belt, somebody. Here. Joe, get me a cutting torch. Job. He ain't no high man. He's the best. He taught me all I know about it. You? High man? Yeah, me. Gee. I never knew that.
watch those cables. They show any sign of giving yell. Wish we could do something. Rod off of the boom and cuts it free. Tell Bodger to let the cap down.
on, fella. You're doing fine. Hold just a couple of minutes. Sergeant, weather off the boom. How do you feel, Rod? Yeah. You came up and got me? Who else? The best I made in the business. Second best. Yeah, Sheriff? Okay, they can go. Don't well, forget, Tim, after the honeymoon, you gotta come back and work that off. You can't keep me away, Rod. Goodbye, Rod, and thanks for everything. Bye, Marion. Goodbye, Tim. Goodbye. 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 Goodb